We're back. Thanks for staying with us. This is Firecrackers. And of course, we're live from our studio here in Lagos, Nigeria. Now, joining me tonight as a financial expert, she's also the CEO of Salon Business Africa. Thanks for joining us tonight again, uh, Uche Umana. Uh, well, there's so much to talk about um, because, as it stands right now, the presidential tax force on COVID 19, uh, led by Boss Mustafa, the secretary to, of course to the government of the federation they are considering a fresh lockdown what does that tell you and what does that mean for uh, businesses in, in nigeria at the moment you're welcome good good to see you again uche all right thank you very much um uh, for businesses um, i think um, the first wave of the pandemic had actually told business owners or given us a roadmap on how we should do business. And this time around, what we're looking at is how to move these processes or um, the situation that we have at hand from one phase to the next. Now, the first thing most business owners are going to be faced with before we get to how they interface with their customers would be um, how the closure of the borders um, is going to affect them. So I would say that um, the, a lot of entrepreneurs will be forced to change the way they do business and they would have to be more innovative because this second wave of the pandemic is going to cause um, a lot of restrictions and also reduction in human contact, meaning that there is going to be a lot of gap in the supply chain. So we now have people who are not just worried about getting goods and services to customers, but they are also thinking of um, how to or um, what to do about the gap that they are going to have in their supply chain. So in um, salvaging their businesses or trying to still get things to work, we would, if time would permit us, look at what they are doing currently, what they should do moving forward, and we would probably give some recommendations on how they would have to start running businesses now. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there are some businesses that um, would still be affected because they don't really fall under the um, essential um, Well, Dr. Uche, Uche are, you, are you there? Still carry out uh, business activities. Okay, that's the peer that uh, you've lost uh, signals. The, uh, we have your audio, Uche. Okay, I think, okay, you're back. Uh, please, please, please go ahead. Go ahead, please. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. So um, what we're going to also look at is how we can still carry out businesses, especially those of us that are not um, essential services. Um, we're going to see how to carry out businesses and still, um, you know, make profit and also, you know, run the business without violating the um, social distance um, um, rules and regulations. Mm. Mm. All, all right, Uche, because uh, time is really running very fast, I would like to hear those recommendations and suggestions. How can Nigerians run businesses in this era of COVID-19, especially with the second wave, especially with talks about an imminent lockdown. Okay, so um, the first thing I would say is um, a lot of businesses, a lot of business owners need need to go into um, different levels of, um, would I say, research and development. And okay. when I say research and development, it literally means how can business be done without really involving a lot of people? Um, a lot of businesses would have to move um, to businesses that would also need to consider for business would be right. um, maybe getting a more of logistic services to work with a lot of business owners would have to create um would have to create some partnerships that would probably involve in fact right now i am talking with um 
fast moving uh, consumer goods in head in, in in mind rather so for people who have um products that we use every day for people who um, have those products that have the um what's it called that have uh, the low margin and um, high volume turnover you would really have to look for ways to either start sourcing locally or working with local brands around you and that way you would have to reduce the contact you have with um your direct customers like most hmm. well Uche, again it does appear that uh, we have issues with uh connectivity we've lost your signals again We'll see if we can reconnect uh, with you as we continue to talk about uh, 2021 and, of course, uh, the fate of businesses so, here in Nigeria, especially with the talks or talks of imminent lockdown by the presidential tax force. There is also the issue of electricity tariff hike. And I'm just wondering how businesses can cope with that. I mean, I understand the federal government has extended uh, uh, suspended rather the, the hike until the end of January. But what plays out after uh, the end of January for businesses? 2020 was a very remarkable year. Businesses suffered. Nigerians lost their jobs. But just how Nigerians can cope uh, with the imminent talks, uh, imminent lockdown, and of course, electricity tariff hike. We'll find out in a moment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, thanks for staying with us. This is Firecrackers. Uh, again, Uche Umana is back, uh, financial expert, and uh, the CEO of Salon Business uh, Africa. Uche, we understand that uh, uh, the internet is uh, playing some tricks with us uh, tonight. But um, that leads me to even the question of how, how can businesses cope online? I mean, because I mean, for people like you, we we'll keep suggesting and uh, telling Nigerians that um, uh, that um, there is a need for us to take our businesses virtually. How can Nigerians uh, uh, cope with the issue of data and internet challenges when we have to do our businesses online? Uche. All right, it does appear that again we've lost uh, connectivity with our guests in Uyo, the Aquarium State Capital. Uh, we'll see how we can reestablish uh, contact uh, with her and uh, get uh, talking, of course, with our conversation uh, for tonight. As we look at 2021, it's a brand new year, but there are talks of an imminent lockdown again in Nigeria, just as, of course, there are a lot of restrictions in Europe and across many countries all around the world. we we'll get some perspective uh, from our guest, a financial expert, uh, tonight on how businesses can thrive in this era of COVID-19, plus the talks of electricity hike. We'll get some perspective from our guests in Uyo, the Aquarius State Capital. But that's in a moment. Stay with us. matters were around um, some collaborative efforts that the state can enjoy with the, with the federal government. It's collaborative, there are win-win opportunities that we see with um, the federal government. I brought some of those economic opportunities to his, to his notice and what we're doing and how we believe that federal government can help accelerate and fast track some of those opportunities because I mean like we all know um, Lagos is the commercial nerve center of the country, and so we need to very early in the year start up on economic programs and in activities that can improve not only our foreign direct investment but also make Lagos, you know, an investor destination um, um, in the country. So Well, thanks for staying with us. This is Firecrackers, and um, 
There you go, the governor of Lagos State, Babajiru Sonwalu, uh, earlier last week, he paid a visit to Mr. President. Of course, we talk about the rebuilding of Lagos, plus the fact that it does appear that we have an oxygen crisis. We'll get some perspective on that next week on the show. Well, let's see if we can cross over again to uh, Uyo, the Aquarium State Capital, where Uche Umana is standing by to speak with us. Uh, Uche, are you there? All right, Uche. Yes, I can. I can hear you, Uche. Uh, you can see how the internet has been playing around, uh, playing tricks with us. I I'm just wondering, for people like you, who keep suggesting to Nigerians that we need to take our businesses virtually or online. How can we cope with this kind of internet and data? We've got. So we need to. We need to work with what we have on hand. Mm. So we are looking at probably working with the capacity we have on ground, which is what the service providers are, produce, are, are providing. But that is like the best option we have now. Because mm. with what is happening with the second wave of the pandemic, if businesses are closed, it becomes our only option. All right. So you Uche, are Uche. limited, yes, you're limited to mm. working with what you have at hand while we hope for the best. And um, part of the recommendation I was talking about before service, um, before we lost um, contact was how we need to start looking inward for local manufacturers because if we're able to connect our services, we're able to create more of a network of services. So I provide logistic services. It will be easier for me to sell your product if I know and have access to you. And the reason I'm still stressing on the fact that some a lot of businesses will need to go online is we only know you exist when you're visible, when we see you. Because we have a lot of businesses that probably during this pandemic may be able to have to offer offline services. But if I am not aware that they exist, or if I don't have another business that is in partnership with them that can, you know, um, reiterate the fact or make them visible, I am still going to lose out at the end of the day. So what we have right now that we can work with is to look more inward for our local manufacturers and also increase our capacity and the quality of the products we have. So this is the right. time for local manufacturers to step up, yes, and increase the quality of their products, especially the raw materials. Because um, if I think I, I stumbled on a data by um, the National Bureau of Statistics, and it highlighted that 86% um, uh, of products that we import in this country comes from Asia and Europe. And 71% of that comes from I mean, China. So hmm. we are complaining about data services and internet services, but still Nigerians are doing business on that for, on that magnitude and volume. So it's not as if it is in isolation. It's just that they have figured out how to use these platforms to reach out to us. All right, Uche. And that uh, is something we need to do, yes. Yes, uh, just just a moment. When you look at this particular administration, the President Muhammad of Wari's administration, uh, what's your scorecard uh, on uh, of what's of course your scorecard of the economic policies of this particular administration? Um, well, I'm going to speak as um, uh, an SME. They have made um, some provisions but i don't think it's enough and it's in reality it doesn't really um, it's it's not practicable if that's um, the right word to use we have um, policies that are being put out there but you can't implement them real time we um last year there was this provision that was made for um company registrations and NAPDAC re registration for a lot of smes but what they didn't put people through was how that will affect and impact their business if they don't understand these processes that they are going through. A lot of people jumped on the fact that um, businesses were being registered at a certain amount. 
but they also didn't understand the fact that the fact that most of these businesses are registered after a period they become taxable they have not explained the details of how these businesses are going to run especially to msmes and i also think they need to put out more practical programs in terms of operations and structure building for businesses. Mm. We don't want the paper seminars. We want more of regional um, states. We, you know, more of home-based um, trainings for individuals, for businesses, mm. business, right. businesses in different categories. We don't want those blanket um, trainings or programs. So right. if I am to score them on um, development, I would say they, they, they still have a lot to do. All right, Uche, because Uche, Uche, because uh, we are we are we are absolutely pressed for time. We have to round off in just a moment. But um, most businesses completely went under during the first lockdown here in Nigeria. What what specific uh, businesses would you advise startups to venture into? Okay, um, for a lot of people out, like I mentioned, if this pandemic persists the um, agro-businesses are going to grow. Um, those who are into essential services, now you may not need, you, you need to find a place, especially those who want to start. You need to find a place in this chain and attach yourself. You do not need to open the factory. There are different levels on this chain of, um, on the supply chain that you can attach yourself. You can go into um, the logistic, you can go into the research and development, you can go into um, managing the information. So you need to look at these industries, like I said, agro-business, um, the pharmaceuticals, you also, um, these are also areas where we can go into the chain of production, just ensuring that we know how to get it safely and conveniently to the consumers. Then we will also look at um, most of uh, how to take businesses online. So a lot of people who have digital and intellectual products, you are going to excel this period. And people right. who also would learn how to leverage on partnerships as well partnerships wherever you are this is not the year to be me myself and i uche and uche business this is the year where you look for partnerships look for people in similar industries look for people right. who are running similar businesses and put your efforts together because that's how you're going to weather the storm uche umana uh, a financial expert as well as the ceo salon business africa there is so much to talk about in terms of businesses here in Nigeria. We cannot end this discussion today. So I promise you we'll definitely consider this conversation some other time on the program. Well, for today, we have to anchor our conversation here with you tonight. Thank you so much for speaking with Galaxy TV. Thank you for having me.